The bell on the front door dings. I'll be right with you, I call, quickly washing my hands and drying them on a towel as I rush back to the front of the store. Welcome to Wake Up and Go-Go. What can I get you? I ask without looking up. Large black coffee, please, and a bear claw if you have one, a gruff, familiar voice says. Snapping my head up, I met with the sight of Bo Barnett. There's perfect, and then there's Bo. At well over six feet tall, he towers over my diminutive five feet one inches. His hair and beard are dark brown, his skin tan from working outside all day. His arms are muscled and huge, and I have to hold in the desperate sigh that always fights to escape whenever I'm near him. I can imagine myself in his arms, held in his warm, sexy embrace. I can picture what it feels like to be beneath him, surrounded by his massive body, pinned down completely at his mercy. In fact, that's one of my recurring dreams. Only he has no idea who I am, none at all, which is kind of ridiculous given how small the town we live in is and the fact that I've lived in the house next door to his family home my entire life. He clears his throat and I jump into action. Spinning away from him, I place a mug under the espresso machine, twisting the grinds valve free and emptying it before refilling it and setting the machine to brew. While it hisses and whistles, I place the last bear claw, the one I've hidden all day just in case he came in, onto a plate and slide it onto the counter. Then I switch off the machine and place the mug of freshly brewed coffee next to the pastry. That's five fifty, please, I tell him, bracing myself as I lift my eyes and look up into his glorious face. Bo has the face of an angel and the personality of a caveman. His cheekbones are high, his jaw square and always tensed, his hazel eyes intense and full of annoyance. Just like always, he grunts his thanks, handing me a ten and waiting while I open the till. Here you go, I say, placing his change in his hand and trying not to sigh at the calluses and lines that are etched into his skin. Bo is a real man with a real job. He works hard up in the mountains for the logging company he started after he got back from college years ago. I always think a man's hands say a lot about him, and Bo's say he's not afraid to get them dirty and pitch in, even though he employs a huge crew of guys to work for him. My mom used to say that lips could lie, but hands always told the truth. She said Dad's hands were one of the things she loved most about him, that every line and groove showed how hard he worked to provide for us. Bo could wear a suit. He could sit in a warm office all day down in town. But instead, he's here most days in muddy jeans, flannel shirts, and worn work boots. Grunting his thanks, he drops his change into the tip jar, picks up his coffee and pastry, and heads for the same table he always sits at by the window. Trying not to stare at him, I busy myself, dragging my exhausted body around the counter to where all the creamer and sugars are laid out in tubs. I tidy the mess, throwing all the empty sachets into the trash, then fill all the tubs back up from the spare stock that's stored in the cupboard below. Stifling another yawn, I glance up at the clock. Only thirty minutes till closing, then I'll finally be able to go home and fall into bed before I have to get back up at five a.m. tomorrow.